this guy. Beautiful little cotton mouth. Look at that. And just as a good measure, a little cotton mouth kiss. The cottonmouth is easily one of the most feared venomous snakes in North America. These venomous vipers are capable of delivering a realistically fatal bite if left untreated. Now many believe that these animals are mindlessly aggressive towards people and even report being chased over great distances by these snakes, but is this the case? What's really going on behind the golden eyes of these reptiles? Today, I'm going to show you that these claims are not only false, but entirely the inverse of this species' behavior. Don't believe me? Stick around and see. Welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Today, we're going to be looking for one of North America's most feared creatures. We're going to be looking for the water moccasin, the cottonmouth, Agistrodon piscivorus. Now, many believe that these are creatures of great power and great evil, but as I'm sure you've gathered from the theme of my entire show, you shall realize that this is indeed false. And these are in fact creatures, same as any other, wanting to get along with their lives as peaceful creatures of the forest. So we find ourselves today in an abandoned, dried creek bed where we know there to be a, quite a large population of said venomous reptile. And I'm hoping today to show you the true nature of these creatures and what they're truly about. So, I hope that you will enjoy this adventure into one of North America's most fearsome beings. Let's go. We start by scouring the rocks near the residual water pockets in this creek, hoping to catch a glimpse of the very creatures we are seeking. Now this area is absolutely loaded with cottonmouths, and we've seen many, many decent sized individuals, but I'm on the hunt for a large one to show you all at home. Oh, that one's missing an eye. Ooh. It's chasing me. Ah, it's chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually the largest one we've seen so far. Hey, come on. Man, she's, she's a little chunky. We don't have the snake hooks today. <gasps> she's chasing me. She's chasing me. Oh man, the reflection of this light makes it so difficult. As you can see, this snake is not really wanting to be confrontational. Her head's actually right there. She's wanting to get away. Come on. I know she's gonna double back if she feels like she's in danger though. What is she doing? Oh man, she crammed herself all the way under this rock underwater. Golly. Well, we'll see plenty more. We've probably seen, I don't know, seven. like seven so far? <laughs> seven. That's a lot of co cotton mouths. Let's see how more we can get. How, how, how more, more we, we can, can get. get? Let's see how more we can get, boys. <laughs> Welcome, weary travelers. We are joined today by a friend. A surprise visit. Take a look right here. Who is that? None other than Dolly Covaspula. Hey, cutie. A beautiful little bald-faced hornet. Wow. I did 
did not expect to see such a beautiful, familiar face while searching for these denizens of evil. I'll take it as a good sign. And you should too. <laughs> so, we're pretty much just kind of scanning kind of crevices, small pockets of water uh, for these snakes that are kind of hunkered down. Um, like I said, these snakes are pretty non-confrontational and very quick to flee. So it'll be kind of a trick to get them before they're whoop, up under a rock or, you know, underwater or somewhere where we can't find them or get to them. So hopefully, hopefully we do okay. All right, check out this beautiful lady. Oh, look at that. A lovely, lovely cotton mouth. As you can see... Not a dangerous snake by any means. Oh, nice and girthy, nice thick bodied. Now, despite popular opinion, these snakes are really not all that bad. Um, her main defense was actually to try and flee. See how she's trying to get away from me? You're okay, sweet girl, you're okay. Shh, 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 shh. Let's see if I can get a hold of her. There we go. Take a look. She really has no inclination to attack. Despite popular opinion, people mis, mis uh, understand these animals' primary defense, which is actually to gape their white mouths. That's where they get that name Cottonmouth. They open that up, flash that white mouth, and that's a warning sign, but it's also an intimidation tactic. So they're actually hoping that the predator goes, oh, what is that white? What is that? That's bright, that's scary. And leaving this animal alone, or at least confusing it, confusing the, the predator long enough that the snake can get away. Hi, you're cute. Look at that beautiful, beautiful snake. Oh, I wish you guys could see. She's looking right at me. Oh, look at that. See? She's calmed down now a bit. Now that she recognizes I'm not interested in eating her. Look at that belly too. Nice and pretty. You're so cute. You're so cute and sweet. Oh, they're gorgeous snakes. Achistrodon, this genus is one of my all time favorite species. I mean, genera of snakes to work with. You get the beautiful copperheads, the boisterous cotton mouths, and of course the elegant Mexican cantiles. Oh my gosh. Come take a look, folks. Now that she's calmed down a bit. Easy. Shh, 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 shh. They really are quite attractive snakes. Now these are pit vipers, so she does have these little heat sensing pits on either side of her face that allow her to see in infrared. Come on. As you can see, I mean, Really minimally, she's not trying to get at me, she's just trying to get away. So don't misunderstand what the behavior you're seeing is. Just because she's trying to get away, she's, she's not feeling like she, her that, that she's in danger, but in fact, she's just feeling like she would rather not be handled and dealt with by a YouTube educator. But she's just trying to get her bearings, trying to figure out what's going on. Very beautiful snake. Very beautiful. It's actually one of the larger ones we've seen today. And we've seen lots. We got a few shots of some smaller ones that were kind of buzzing around. Now the venom of these animals is pretty severe. Um, a bite from one of these snakes uh, would definitely land you in the hospital and um, eventually could become life-threatening uh, if left untreated. But, oh, they're such cool snakes. I love the keeled scales. Just the thick lines on the scales. Perfect for helping kind of catch the water. Hi, you're so cute. You're so pretty. Look at that. Really a well-behaved snake. Uh, she was trying to get away. And once she figured out that she was going to have a hard time doing that, she kind of has decided to calm down, which is good, which is helpful for the video. She's kind of difficult to see because she's wanting to keep an eye on me. Come look at the camera. Come look at the camera. Look at that. 
beautiful snake. Absolutely stunning. She's a little muddy. Uh, typically they're gonna be this kind of dark color. Easy way to tell the difference between a cottonmouth and say some of the non-venomous Nerodia water snakes is that nice kind of raccoon-like banding behind the eye. Those markings are a telltale sign that you are in fact dealing with a venomous cottonmouth. However, despite what people think, these snakes don't chase you. They're not out to get you. They're not out to bite you. They're just simply trying to go about their lives as snakes. So they're more interested in getting away from you. They see you as a pretty scary, intimidating animal, a pretty scary, intimidating predator that could potentially want to kill and eat them. So their main, you know, idea is to get away from that, to get away from the possible bodily harm, which sadly uh, is the case for a lot of these snakes because they are killed um, by people quite often, not as a predation event, uh, but as people simply killing them because they misunderstand them. Uh, these snakes are really harmless if you're outside of their strike range. So most bites occur when people are actively trying to harm or otherwise kill the snake, uh, which is seems like a little karmic, right? Hi, cutie. As you can see, she's actually really calmed down. Hi. It's okay. See, she's still trying to get away. She's not doubling back. She's not trying to bite me. This is a nice uh, medium-sized uh, adult. Actually, at this point, they can they can reproduce. Um, but uh, they can get, you know, two, three, sometimes even four times larger than this. Um, although you're never going to see a, an eight-foot cottonmouth chasing you down on your pappy's tractor, ready to jump for your jugular and rip your throat out. Um, but these are sizable pit vipers they are medically significant they are potentially dangerous if you don't respect their space and respect them as beautiful beautiful animals take a look at her gosh she's so cool i just love running into this specific genus and really even this specific species uh, cotton mouths have always been a favorite of mine since i was a kid the juveniles are just so wonderfully colored dark kind of copper banding beautiful kind of gold undertones in the eyes but they are just they really are very attractive snakes and even though they have such a bad reputation they don't deserve it this is a wild animal folks and as you can see it's it's has no interest other than getting on with its life but this is the true cottonmouth right here this is 95 percent of all cottonmouths are exactly as well-mannered as this one. Once they find out that they're not in any danger, they're ready to just get on their way. So we've seen plenty, we'll run into a few more. So I'm gonna let her go, see what she does. See that? What is she doing? Is she chasing me? Is she going for me, folks? No, she's going right back to her little watering hole to go back to hunting fish and tadpoles, frogs, small turtles, sometimes even other snakes. Really cool. Alright, this one is actually missing an eye, I think. Hey buddy. He's nice and sunning himself. Ah, no. Go on, come on out. It's really nice. Oh. Hey friend, take a look at that. See, once again, look how calm, look how placid. Take a look at this guy. Beautiful little cotton mouth. Looks to be blind or at least has an eye injury on the right side. Easy, buddy. But once again, not an aggressive animal, not, not hardly even a defensive animal. And I wanna talk about the differences between those two. So when I'm talking about snakes in particular, especially venomous snakes, I hear the word aggressive a lot. Oh, that's the cottonmouths are so aggressive. Cottonmouths are so aggressive, watch out, they're so aggressive. Are they? Because these animals aren't aggressive. I would not classify them as aggressive at all. 
In fact, if anything, I would, con I would consider these animals to be defensive. What's the difference, Jack? Well, an animal that's defensive feels that its life is in danger and it's acting to protect that life, which is the same as any organism uh, should do. So when people say, oh, it's aggressive, aggressive is, is ill intent without provocation, right? And what I mean by that is animals going out of their way to hurt people or to hurt other animals. And that's just not the case with these lovely little snakes. They are so content to go about doing their own lives, to go about hunting for food, sunning on a nice rock, napping under a nice cool area. These are not aggressive animals and they only really will bite if they feel that their life is threatened. And oftentimes that's when bites occur is when people are trying to kill these animals. Because look at this guy, He's, he sees me, he sees my face. He's got heat sensing pits on either side of his head. He can see that there's a huge orange glob poking him, prodding him, holding him up. Is he trying to bite me? No, is he trying to strike me? No, why? Because I'm making him feel safe. I'm, I'm letting him kind of crawl, explore, I'm not making any fast movements, any sharp movements. He can just kind of explore what's going on in a safe way. He doesn't feel that he's in danger. So if he doesn't feel that he's in danger, he feels no need to defend himself. Not an aggressive animal, not an animal looking to go out of its way to hurt somebody, to hurt a, a person, to hurt another animal, but in fact, a very sweet and, and relatively placid animal, calm, calculated just wanting to go about its own life look at that well we're gonna let this lovely little cotton mouth get back to resting on his little branch on his little bit of rock and just as a good measure a little cotton mouth kiss once again not animals looking to hurt you not animals looking to bite you but animals just looking for the respect that we show other species. Look at that. Amazing. All right, little friend. Come on. Here we go. Another kiss. What a sweet, sweet little snake. And I'll just let him find his way back. This little sunning area right there. <laughs> Such a cool experience. I don't encourage anybody to go out and replicate this, but I just do this to illustrate that these are animals. Same as any puppy or kitty or fox or bird of prey. These are animals that command a respect. They can harm you, they can, but that's not what they're wanting to do. That's not what they're hoping to do. That's not what they're going out of their way to do. These are animals looking to survive, same as you and me, same as any other organism in the animal kingdom. And they don't deserve the horrible reputation that they have for simply defending their lives from people who misunderstand them. So, super great. I think we're probably gonna end the episode here. We've had a lot of really positive interaction and some cool defensive postures from some cotton mouths today. I hope that this was eye-opening for you. Uh, I really, this is part of the big mission of Jack's World of Wildlife is to create this type of stuff, to show people that these animals that have become monsters in society, that have become the boogeyman uh, in their you know, family stories, that these are not these are not those things. These are not those creations of, of fright that people would have you believe. They are animals. And you can see even in the wild, these are not captive animals. These are not animals that maybe have ever even come in contact with a human being. But when they don't feel that their lives are threatened, when you're not attacking them, when you're not getting all up in their face, when you're respecting them, when you're respecting their space, when you're respecting their place in the ecosystem, these are for all intents and purposes, harmless animals. Now, once again, not encouraging people to go and free handle venomous snakes. I've been working with venomous snakes for the better part of a decade, and they can be very dangerous and they can be life-threatening, but that does not mean that that is all that they are, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Be sure to join our channel memberships for exclusive behind the scenes content. Buy their new merch. Maybe we'll have a cotton mouth one in there sometime. And be sure, to tune in next time for the next episode of Jack's World of Wildlife so that you can learn about the animals that nobody else is teaching you about. So I hope you enjoyed this. We really enjoyed our special time, very special time with the cotton mouths that we have found today. And I hope that your 
view was at least challenged on these snakes because really and truly they are defensive in nature. Uh, they appear aggressive because of the way that their defensive uh, postures are uh, when in fact uh, they are honestly some of the calmest and least aggressive and least quick to bite uh, venomous snakes that I've ever actually had the pleasure of working with. Uh, so I'm always going to stick up for my little friends and I hope that you will learn to do so as well. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.